We'll now have a look at the models for the transistor in the three different regions of operation. The simplest one is when the transistor is cut off. Now remember the transistor is cut off when VBE, the base emitter voltage, is less than 0.5 of a volt. There's no base current that's flowing, therefore there's no collector current that's flowing, and the device is off. So that's the same as having no currents in these three terminals. The transistor is doing nothing, so it's like not having the transistor at all. So if you know the transistor is in cutoff, then you can effectively just remove the transistor from the circuit and replace it with this equivalent. Couldn't be simpler. The next uh, most straightforward model is for saturation. Now remember that saturation is when the base current is so high it drives the collector current high which causes the collector emitter voltage to drop but it can't drop indefinitely instead it hits a hard limit when the load line intersects with the uppermost um, uh, IC versus VCE curve. That voltage for us is just a constant equal to 0.2 of a volt. So when the device is saturated, VBE is still 0.7 because the device is conducting, but VCE is equal to VCE sat, which is 0.2 of a volt. So it looks like there's a simple battery between the base and the emitter voltage and a simple battery between um, the collector and emitter terminals. And so we have a 0.7 volt battery there and a 0.2 volt battery there. And we can all solve circuits involving a few batteries. So again, this is a very simple representation of the device and saturation. So no conceptual difficulties, uh, no technical complications when it comes to doing calculations. Which just leaves us with the active region. And the active region, frankly, is no more complicated Remember that when the transistor is in the active region, VBE is equal to 0.7 of a volt because the device is conducting. The collector current is independent of the collector emitter voltage and instead IC is equal to beta times IB. So the collector current is determined by the base current. And of course that's equivalent to having a current controlled current source. So between the base and the emitter, we've just got 0.7 volts. And between the collector and the emitter, we've got a current source, which is equal to beta times IB. That's it. That's all there is to it. So let's do some calculations now involving these models to, um, to see how easy it is. We won't make any assumptions about which region of operation the device is in. We will make an assumption do the calculation, see if the result is consistent with our assumption, and then proceed from there. So the first one we'll look at is this circuit here. So we've got a fixed voltage source VCC connecting uh, the transistor with our output loop. Uh, we don't have a voltage source on our input loop. Instead, the base is connected to ground. Now, hopefully you can see that this means the transistor must be in cutoff. Why? Because VBE is zero. The, um, the base is connected to ground. The emitter is connected to ground. Therefore, VB minus VE is zero minus zero equals zero. When v, VBE equals zero is clearly less than 0.5, and we know that when it's less than 0.5, the base current is zero, which means the collector is zero. Therefore, the collector emitter voltage is sitting at VCC, 10 volts. Another way we could do that is, if we wanted to, is just write down an equation for that loop. There's not much to it. Um, VBE uh, plus zero equals zero, right? There's just nothing there. So VBE is equal to zero. 
So that means IC is equal to zero. That means, and if we were to sum the voltages around this loop, of course, we have VCC equals IC RC plus VCE. Well, if IC is equal to zero, we just have VCC equals VCE. So the solution here is IC equals zero and VCE equals 10 volts. That's all there is to it. So it's not a very useful circuit, but we're not about that yet. Here's another example. This one is potentially more useful. We've got the same output loop arrangement, uh, but now we've got a resistor RB connecting VCC to the base. Can we figure out which region of operation the transistor is in just by staring at this? Well, we can probably rule out cutoff because if the transistor was in cutoff, then IB would be zero. If IB is zero, then the voltage dropped across there is zero, which means the voltage here is the same as the voltage there. Now the voltage there is 10 volts. So this would be 10 volts, but if that's 10 volts and that's a zero volts, clearly that's enough to turn the base emitter junction on. So we can rule out being in the cutoff region, but we can't really figure out whether it's active or saturated because remember the difference between those two states depends on how much current is flowing in the device and we won't know that until we do a calculation. So let's do a calculation. We want to calculate the base current first of all and so we concern ourselves with the input loop and you can see that we've got a loop around the outside. We've got VCC, RB and VBE. So let's look at the input loop. We've got VCC equals IB RB plus VBE. Now what do we do here? Um, well I can calculate that IB therefore is equal to VCC minus VBE over RB which is 10 volts minus 0.7 volts over RB which is 10 K ohms. So that's 9.3 over 10 which is 0.93 milliamps. So it looks like there's 930 microamps flowing down there. All right. Um, now the next thing to do is to work out what's happening in the output loop, but um, we, we can't really decide what to do. We're going to have to make an assumption. Do we assume that the transistor is in the cutoff, uh, sorry, is in the saturation region or the active region? I always go for the active region. So unless it's entirely obvious which region it's in, um, I always assume active. So we'll assume um, active. That means that VCC equals ICRC plus VCE. So VCE is equal to VCC minus ICRC. What's IC? Well, if we're in the active region, it's going to be beta times 0.93. So this will be VCC minus beta times IB RC. So that's 10 minus beta is 100. So that's 100 times 0.93, which is 93 milliamps. 93 milliamps times RC, which is 1K ohm, is 93 volts. So we calculate that VCE is minus 83 volts. Does this seem reasonable? 
Well, if that's minus 83 volts and VB is 0.7, then VBC is definitely negative. That's one of the requirements for being in the active region. VBC must be less than zero. But we've only got a 10 volt voltage source. So how on earth can we get minus 83 volts? And the reality is we can't, right? What's happened is that RB is too small, which is causing a very large base current to flow, which is trying to cause a very large collector current to flow. And as you know, when the collector current increases, VCE drops, but it can only drop as far as VCE sat. So the voltage here can only go down to 0.2 of a volt. It cannot keep going down until it reaches minus 83 volts. So this cannot be true. So uh, device must be saturated. So our assumption is wrong. Okay, so the device is not in the active region. We already deduced that it was uh, not in the cutoff region, so we'll have to now assume that the device is saturated. Well, if it's saturated, then in the output loop here, we've got VCC equals ICRC plus VCE, but now it's VCE sat. It's fixed at 0.2 of a volt. So we can calculate IC to be VCC minus VCE sat divided by RC, which is 10 minus 0.2 volts over RC, which is 1K ohm. And so that is 9.8 milliamps. So we can finish off by saying that IC is 9.8 milliamps, VCE is 0.2 of a volt. What else can we check? Well let's see, VBC now is 0.5 of a volt because that's 0.7, that's 0.2, that's a given really, since we've assumed that it's saturated. I don't see anything about these numbers. The not, currents aren't flowing in the wrong direction. Voltages don't have the wrong polarity. Everything looks okay. Plus we've ruled out the other two. So this result is consistent with our assumption of the device being saturated. All right, let's have a look at one more example. No prizes for guessing which region this transistor is in. The circuit topology is exactly the same as the last one, but some of these values are a bit different. RB is now much larger. Beta is a little bit smaller. So let's go ahead and work stuff out. So we'll assume again, this time right from the get-go, that the transistor is active. If we concern ourselves with the input loop, then VCC equals IB RB plus VBE. So IB is VCC minus VBE over RB, which now is 10 minus 0.7 volts over 150k ohms. And that is, if I'm not mistaken, 62 microamps. Now we've assumed that it's active, so that means that we think that this relationship applies. So that means that the collector current is going to be 85 times 62 microamps. And that is equal to 5.27 milliamps. Now we can 
turn our attention to the output loop and we can say that VCC equals ICRC plus VCE. So VCE is equal to VCC minus ICRC. So that's 10 volts minus 5.27 milliamps times 1k ohm and that works out to be 4.73 volts. All right, how do we feel about this? Well, collect the current 5.27 milliamps down there, that looks okay. The collector emitter voltage, 4.73 volts, that just seems more believable, doesn't it? We've got 10 volts across the entire circuit, 4.73, you know, that I'm not seeing any problems there. We've assumed it's active, so the other thing to check is VBC, right? Well, the base voltage is 0.7 of a volt, so VB is 0.7 volts. VC is the same as VCE at the moment, and that is 4.73 volts. So clearly VBC, which is VB minus VC, is less than zero. These results are consistent with our assumption that the device is in the active region, so I'm pretty sure that these results are correct. So, this is what you have to do. It's very much like the diode problems. We have to assume the transistor is in a particular region, um, do the calculation, check that the results are consistent. If they're not, then there's something wrong with our assumption and we have to try another region of operation. My recommendation is that unless you can uh, see at a glance which region it is, start with the active region and see where that leads you. Sometimes you don't need to um, go to the trouble of figuring out which region of operation it's in. Sometimes there'll be a question and it will say, you know, there's an amplifier here. As soon as it says there's an amplifier, that means it's been designed to be in the active region and it's perfectly legitimate, therefore, to assume that it's in the active region. You don't have to um, confirm it. 